Hi guys, it's Joe here from Rufio. Welcome to the channel. If this is your first time here, you should consider hitting subscribe before you go any further and realise how fucking garbage this content is. If, on the other hand, you're one of them weirdos who's returned to the channel, well, welcome back. You certainly have some better things to do with your time. For today's video, we're taking a look at a going second Lost World Dino variant. The idea here is the usual shenanigans of let's just go second and obliterate our opponent with zero regard for what they want to do. This isn't about fun, this isn't about interactive, this is about free wins. So if somebody wants to play a deck that can mostly be run on a budget and there are some budget alternatives to the cards that aren't so cheap in here, then this might be the kind of deck that is perfect for you. Speaking of which, if you're watching this video and you are feeling inspired to pick up some Yu-Gi-Oh! singles, or even Pokemon ones for that matter, you should consider checking out the channel sponsors, Jam Jam Cards UK. There is a link in the description to their eBay store, which will net you a cheeky discount, courtesy of yours truly. But anyway, that's enough waffling on from me. Let's get stuck in to the deck profile. Okay, so for today's build, the aim is basically just go second and smash the fuck out of your opponent, and that's pretty much that. There's not much more to conclude from that than what the aim is with the deck. So, again, most of this is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, a couple of copies of Conductor Tyranno. I think three is way too much. You really don't ideally want to open this in your hand. There are times where it comes up where that's a really cool option, but honestly, I don't feel like this is one of them. And I think the two is perfect. You want to be able to just get it out of your deck with Evo Pill and go about your day. We have a single copy of Pancratops. If it was at more than one, we'd probably run more than one. Uh, it's a really good card. It's absolutely insane, in fact, being able to attack and then tribute itself off to pop a card. It can force out opponent's cards. It's just, this card's absolutely bonkers. I'd really like to see it come off to three, though, again in future. Triple copies of Soul Eating Over after your most important normal summon in the deck. Absolutely hands down. Without this card, the deck is not really that playable, to be quite honest with you. And as such, you need to run three copies of it. It sets up your combos, it searches cards, it can dump stuff into the graveyard, it's all of the good things that this deck needs. We have triple copies of Miscellaneousaurus, while it's at 3, we absolutely need to run it. A lot of people for a while wanted to see this card get hit, and honestly it dropped off the radar a little bit, but we're seeing it again creeping back into the game. People opting to play this deck, just a really good way of smashing forward at the beginning of each format, and that's what tends to happen. Uh, so honestly, seeing this card out and about, a lot of people are going to be bitching about this over the next few weeks. But anyway, I'm getting off a little bit topic there. Honestly, just run three copies of this card. I really don't need to elaborate on that. A single copy of Giant Rex. Some builds aren't running this anymore, but honestly, I think this is a really good option, particularly a good insurance policy if you need to go first as a way of getting a free rank four onto the field. There are other ways of doing it in the deck now with the way it combos off a little bit more, but honestly, I think having this as an option is just always a good option to go for. Onto our babies here, we've got two copies of Baby Cerasaurus and one Petit Pteranodon. I think this is perfectly fine. We're not running the True King build where we used to run three of the babies so we could pop a bunch of shit and go absolutely wild. Two babies and then the one Petit Pteranodon is more than enough in this particular build. And we have two copies of a Nimadorned Arcasaur. This card is absolutely insane and part of the reason that this deck has absolutely taken off in the last few formats. Two copies works really nicely. It's not something you overly want to open in your hand. You want to ideally special summon it from the deck. But in the case that you don't see Soul Eating Over after a way to get to it and you see this, this is a perfectly good normal summon in its place. Then on to hand traps, they're not too big a deal in this deck to be honest with you because all the cards that we're playing with are basically there just to crack the opponent's board. However, Cyframe Gear Gamma is one of the stronger options that you can go for this format and I think that it fits perfectly into this deck along with triple copies of Ash Blossom which basically hits at least every single deck in some way or another. So I think that these are your two best options to go for. You can consider others if you don't have access to them for any reason. We then move on to our spells. We're not running a single trap card in this deck. So two copies of Double Evolution Pill, two is perfectly fine. You could cut it down to one if you wanted to, but honestly being able to get into it is ideal for this deck. Triple copies of Fossil Dig. It searches basically everything you need to get started. What's not to like about that? Triple copies of Lost World outs other people's Mystic Minds, which is always a good option because we don't want to get cucked by that. Not that we really have that problem in this deck, but also the fact that it reduces your opponent's stuff down. It's just an insanely strong field spell that I think a lot of people overlook. 
Speaking of Mystic Mine, we are running it because we like free games. Honestly, the amount of times you can slap this town if your opponent doesn't have a way out, you just instantly win the game. We are running a 44 card deck as well, so the chances are our opponent is going to be grinding out way before we do. And if they're not smart enough to scoop it up, then they're decking out. And because we run field spells, of course, terraforming is mandatory. We have the new pot card in here. Uh, this could be any number of other ones, but honestly, I think this is the strongest option for the deck. If you don't have access to it because of price, there are any, basically any of the other pot cards will do. But this is definitely the strongest option in here. Being able to choose which cards you're banishing is really powerful in this particular deck. Um, to be quite honest with you, we don't need most of the extra deck for most of the time. So we can pick and choose which ones we don't need to see. Because when we do need to see extra deck cards, they're usually quite important. So we can choose to keep those ones available to us. Hopefully that makes sense, even though I was rambling a little bit there. Triple copies of Dark Ruler no more. You just say no to your opponent and they don't have a fucking choice. Triple copies of Lightning Storm. Um, back row is a little bit more prevalent in the current format than it was before. So if you come up against a back row heavy deck, this is a free win. Um, and if not, you can always just wipe out your opponent's monsters, which is always a nice touch. We have a single copy of Feather Duster for much the same reason. Wiping out back row for free is always a good option. As long as you're wiping out more than one card, you're going a plus on this anyway. And for most decks, setting more than one card in back row is usually the way they're going to go. And if we round off our main deck with a single copy of Call by the Grave, hand traps where they are are really powerful against this deck. So we want to be able to counter them as best we can. And also the fact that this can be used offensively or defensively, going first or second, this is a really good option to have available to you. We then move on to the extra deck, Link Karibo. Again, pretty self-explanatory. We have level 1, so it's an easy way to get rid of it. Secure Gardener can help get rid of Pentastag or Link Karibo, depending on what we need to do. Pentastag, of course, for setting up your ultimate conductor for smacking the fuck out your opponent and dealing loads of damage. Lambda is in here, a really cool slept on card. If you're going first, it's a way of being able to make sure that your gammas and stuff are live for during your opponent's turn. IP Masquerainer for interrupting your opponent, pretty much self-explanatory, although don't set it up on its own because then you're probably going to lose. Uh, Nightmare Phoenix and Nightmare Unicorn, just really good utility cards, I really don't need to elaborate on those. And Access Code Talker is a free win button. We then move on to our Exceed option, so we have a copy of Abyss Dweller, easy enough to make in this deck, incredibly potent. If we go first and we don't have many other options, we can sell Baguska and pass turn, a lot of the time that'll see you through many different decks. Tornado Dragon for popping pesky back row, what's not to like about that? Degares for a number of different reasons, all of his effects are absolutely insane, I'm sure I don't need to elaborate on that. Dorka and Lagia are just really good options for if you are forced to go first. Uh, Lagia comes up much less than it used to, but honestly, either of these are just really strong options, depending on what you're playing against. And then we finally round off our extra deck with a copy of Omega. It's easy enough to make in the deck, of course, because Gamma and Driver, but, you know, ripping out cards out of your opponent's hands. And if it does end up in your grave, being able to recycle stuff is a really cool option. And that, I'm afraid, is all for today's deck profile. Hopefully by virtue of the fact that you made it this far, you've enjoyed it enough to have hit subscribe or possibly hate it enough that you couldn't possibly look away. If you are one of them freakazoids who's hit subscribe and are still watching this video, make sure you hit the notification bell too for good measure. Remember, this isn't the only kind of content we do on this channel. We do combo tutorials, how to play videos, locals vlogs when they return and all the rest of the good stuff that you could possibly want. But once again, thank you very much for coming along. I do appreciate you being here and I'll see you in the next one. This content is brought to you in association with my buddies over at Jam Jam Cards UK. You can find the links to the eBay store and the Facebook page in the description.